Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. I know I, my face was way too serious for your intro. I was like, it's just what? All right. Anyway, welcome to this episode. We're going to be talking about all kinds of cool stuff. We're going to talk about some Ubisoft at E3, some Ghostbusters, uh, and Dark Souls, and Evo, and all that kind of stuff. So thank you again. You're watching and listening to Press Start TV. My name's Will. This is Nine. Yep. This is James. Good eye, Mike. All right, let's start off with Ubisoft. This year's E3, they'll, of course, be hosting another media briefing uh, this year. Oh. And uh, Are they going to get into this year's? Absolutely. We, we were technically in last year's. We just couldn't make it in time. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, of course, see another reiteration of Just Dance. I mean, you can expect Just Dance to see 2016. That. Yeah. Or 17, 17 yeah. I guess it would be. I've never played a Just Dance game. You're not but missing I, anything. Yeah, I did. Fan with your body. I disagree. I, I think they're fun. I watched like uh, like my seven year old stepbrother play it though, and it was amazing because he was like he. My seven-year-old brother has, like, it's weird how some dance moves skip a generation or dance styles because he totally dances like Travolta. And he was just, like, he was nailing it. Like Now, now I say a lot of, like, you know, teenagers no. that maybe don't get into games too much, you know, it uh, doesn't matter, girls, boys, doesn't matter. I mean, if there's a current poppy song on the radio that they like that they can then play in a video they're game, totally getting into they're that. into it, right? Yeah. They're just into it. And then, of course, mom recognizes it because it's on the radio. Dad recognizes it because it's all here. You know, there you go. It's just <laughs> Dad still, beats his head against car window. Yeah, I was going to say, Dad yeah. recognizes it wants to kill himself. Yeah. Dude, I tell you, man, I play, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know. That's where Justin Bieber belongs. Yeah. Rock <laughs> yeah. <band>. yeah. <laughs> I think they got mixed up. I don't know. I'll tell you, though, I did the Michael Jackson experience, Black Sabbath man. ends up in I, Just I Dance. Had a, I had a blast, man. Really? I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Did it come with a glove? It, it, there was. You, you <laughs> actually yeah. could buy yeah. a new edition that came with the glove and the hat. I should work in advertising or something. No, they totally did that. They totally did that. Uh, collector's edition and everything. But anyway, uh, we can expect to see probably Watch Dogs 2 this year. I hope so, because, man, yeah. I love Watch Dogs. It was, it was good. I'm one of few people that actually enjoyed Watch Dogs. I, I like, thought, like, the story <laughs> was good. For me, uh, I like a good story. So I wasn't, like, blown away, although the concept was great. That's what I loved about it the most. The atmosphere was great. The, the, the gameplay the was great. Execution of the game was great. The reason a lot of people didn't like it was the story didn't wasn't yeah. cohesive enough to stay on track. I didn't, I didn't think so. Yeah, I mean, some of the side missions just you felt a little disconnected right. with what's your overall. You know, it was just T-bone little... stuff was weird. Like, why am I doing this? But apparently, they're going to make this thing into a movie and all that kind of stuff. Did you play Watch cool. Dogs at all? Or? Yeah, I did a little yeah. bit. I love Watch Dogs. I didn't stick with it. So it just wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And that's something, especially in the gaming industry, you have to be grabbed like in the first, sure. you yeah. know, ten minutes nowadays. Uh, and that just you know didn't do it for me at the time. But yeah. I appreciate it. So for what it was. Watch Dogs too. So exciting to see what changes are coming to that franchise. So we'll see. Um, South Park. <laughs> The fractured butthole. The fractured butthole. Mm. Um, <laughs> That's how we have to say it. Mm. Uh, There's another way to say it, but we can't get away with that on the radio. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I loved uh, The Stick of Truth. Uh, I still need to play The Stick of Truth. Oh, it was fantastic. Oh, it was really I know good. it is. It was such a good homage to <laughs> it's a, I know, old RPGs. I should pick it up for 360, but... Uh, the, and little, South Park. The little Pokemon figures or whatever yeah. they were. <laughs> Tim Pokemon! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude, <laughs> the dude, man, some of the... Oh, God. <laughs> I just I need to play that. It so was so I, fun, man. I just wildly inappropriate. Which yeah, is, you it's know, totally like inappropriate. Yeah. I mean, that's, but yeah, that's that's who yes, they are. I know some and of the stuff you're referencing. Oh man, is wildly inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, but fun. I it, it always involves. I was laughing the whole time. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, South Park uh, for Honor. Here's a game that I'm pretty excited about. This looks so this cool. This looks good. It, it looks, really it does. It has a story mode, it's, which I'm so excited yeah, for because it's mostly a multiplayer game. It's like, if you're wondering what this game's about, if you haven't seen anything about it, it's like... Chivalry meets Dark Souls. It's kind of like Dark Souls... 300 and Assassin's what are we Creed about? all for mixed Honor. in. Oh, dude, I love For Honor. I that totally just missed your lead so in. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was like, what game were you talking about? I was like, South Park does Honor, not yeah. have Dark Souls or Chivalry qualities. But, um, <laughs> no, no, For Honor, it really looks good. When it I first awesome. saw the launch trailer, I was like, this is what I've been waiting for because yeah. I like competitive games like Call of Duty and stuff like that, but I always wish there was a sword fighting element. Did you know the guy that like started the development for For Honor wasn't even like a game developer per se at first? Like he was like he was, yeah, he was like a rich dude that liked sword play in his off time. It was just like yeah. there's no games about this. Like I, I love. It. I mean, from it what we've cool. seen so far, it's just it's like 
everything that you want to do, you know? It's, I it's love got that the it doesn't setting, even, it's got, but it's it's got like, such a heavy focus on the combat that mm -hmm. if the combat is even slightly off, it's going to ruin the whole experience. True. Like I said, it's a mix between Assassin's Creed 300 and Dark Souls. I love All that it... All mashed into like one. The setting, yeah, the setting doesn't really even matter because you have Vikings and like Samurai and, uh, Knights and Templars, and, which yeah. I don't think all existed in the same time period at all. Who cares? Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If, if they were went through that, I mean, everything seems weighted, right? I think yeah. so far. I mean, I hope from the looks, from the everything looks seems of it, dedicated. It yeah, like yeah. it's it's. I'm stoked about that one. Yeah. It actually has its own single player too, which right single you know. player story campaign, which mm -hmm. is awesome in today's day because you it seems that it. campaigns are going the way of the wind. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, Tom Clancy Ghost Recon Wildlands. Mm -hmm. Wildlands, yeah. Wild, yep. That sounds cool. Uh, that's well, first basically open world. first open world. Yeah. yeah. Ghost Recon game. It's kind of like. Uh, it's gonna be brutal. I guess after like Metal, Metal Gear, Gear Solid yeah. did it, yeah. Right. I was say, say. yeah. Essentially Metal Gear, but with things in the wild that will kill you. Cool. Snakes. So Metal Gear, Far Cry Prime yeah. meets yeah. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. Metal Cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but that seems interesting. I mean, uh, and uh, if you've played those games before, I mean, v New Vegas was awesome. Rainbow Six Vegas was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I well, just, Rainbow Six Siege did not do as well as they wanted it to do. You know, I've, I still know I've people playing, playing it things. though. Yeah, there are a lot yeah. of good things about that. Yeah, um, I people mean, get into it. It some people, off. some people gave it shooter of the year over Call of Duty. I mean, it definitely didn't do as well financially, but and you need people to play it with. Uh, yeah, right. I think you do. That's why a lot of people don't like it because you got people. Have you couldn't group of people yeah. to get together and play that game. That's how I played it, and I was like, oh, I'm dead. Cool. Oh. And, and so it's just like <laughs> and a lot of games, dead, but if you, for the whole round. It's, it's like if you can get people together, it's a like Destiny. If you get a raid, you can't do a rest raid by yourself. No. I mean, that's well, not true. Technically, some people. <laughs> okay, some people can, but you know, for the average player. Anyway, Ubisoft. Ubisoft's press conference looks really good. Like I said this year, we're going to look out for Watch Dogs 2, South Park, The Fractured But Whole, Fort Otter, and Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. So there you go. Check that out. Anyway, when we get back, we're talking about Ghostbusters and Evo right after this. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we just got to talk about E3 and Ubisoft. Uh, look forward to seeing that. So we'll check that out. Uh, let's get into some, first of all, Evo, uh, some Evo news. Um, Evo is going to be big this year. Yeah, uh, it was announced, I guess, that Pokin Tournaments, Street Fighter V, and Smash Bros are all going to be part of Evo this year. Yes, and all three of those have over 1,000 competitors entered in. That's, That's a lot of people. Yeah. Now, granted, there's yeah. probably a lot of crossover there. Like mm -hmm. Some people playing Pokemon and Smash, some people playing Smash and Street Fighter, and so forth and so on. Oh, gotcha. But, One person counts as three. Right, right. Yeah. But even still, that's like a decathlon. That yeah. is <laughs> that's still like far larger than any of those games. Like I've 330 ever seen people. In any other every single person was playing three games, so it's still a good amount. Um, that's rounds. a lot of people. That's yeah. a lot of people. That's a lot of brackets. Think yeah. about those brackets. No. Man. I'm not. Uh, you're the guy who has to keep charge. SmashCon took three days, and some of those games only had a hundred some competitors. Yeah. With a 64. I think that, I mean, but the Smash 4, I think, was close to 700. Was it? Yeah, it was up there. Yeah. It was pretty big. But even that's still, like Pokemon Tournaments, that's a newer game, and technically Street Fighter V is a little bit newer as well. That's been around for a while. But Pokemon Tournament, a, like a, a yeah. whole oh, new really game. Really well. Um, yeah. I mean, so, uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, let's get into some, by the way, you're watching, listen to Press Start TV. My name is Will. This is Mr. James. Hey there. This is Mr. Nine. Yep. Who that? All right, so Ghostbusters, there's going to be a new game coming to you on your PS4, and I think Xbox One, <laughs> yeah, PC, it's probably, uh, <laughs> which is exciting. There's a new movie coming out, as most of you probably know. Um, I saw the trailer. It's pretty it's June interesting. It looks good. Or June 26th or something. Something like that. It's June. Sometime in June. Doesn't matter. I'm going to go see it opening night. Oh, yeah. I, I'm a huge Ghostbusters nerd. It looks really good, too. I mean, a lot of people Maybe, have an yeah, opinion I'm and want to tell you what they think well because there's so many people that love this franchise. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm taking it from the, the reboot perspective. I'm not expecting it to be a build on what was previously there. Sure. I'm expecting it to be a whole new generation, which yeah. is why I can accept this for what it is. Yeah, going off the same and idea. all female cast and the, the gender bender. Pretty Do much you like the, the yeah. cast in, in the new one? I think the cast is okay. Yeah, yeah. it looks solid. Um, so long as Melissa McCarthy stays away from her typical cliche jokes, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm okay with it. 
Mm. Um, I think she's good. She's a good actress. I think she'll do the job right. And I think you have to know what you're getting into yourself. I think into. she's filling the doctor and role really well. And as long really as Chris well. Hemsworth as the, the he, assistant he looks like is the best cocky and smart yeah. alecky, it will be perfect. Awesome. Yeah. It will be perfect. How about you? Do you like the you like the cast? Oh yeah, no, I think Chris Hemsworth looks great. Like I love that they're putting him in kind of like a nerdy role. Right. Like, yeah. I've never seen him in before, and it's like, just like true nerd role. Yeah. <laughs> and he's all so like great. sincere and like, oh, all right, let's do this. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, uh, it looks good. Yeah. The um, the game though. Well, and then the the original movie cast, obviously one of the best casts oh, yeah. ever. In the movie. Cool. Uh, I, I just love as all their that. roles. Yeah. Ray Stance. Nice. Uh, unfortunately, not Egon, but yeah. well, Ray Stance course. and Peter Bankman. I'm not sure if Ernie Hudson's in it as a cameo or not. Mm. But we'll see. Mm. Or if Janine. Janine Melnitz. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I would love to see Janine in this movie. <laughs> Janine was always one of my favorite characters as a Ghostbuster, mm. like in the Ghostbuster movies, and even yeah. in the cartoon, the real Ghostbuster. Yeah, the cartoon. Loved her awesome. characters. Mm. They're they're so unique. Um, so anyway, uh, the, and the game looked really the, good, and I like the premise. It looks awesome. So one one major thing with the game that I wanted to bring up, and I kind of wanted to see what Charles' reaction was to this, is the game will not feature any of the characters from the new movie. That's good. Or any of the characters from the old movie. That's bad. <laughs> and I kind of figured this is what you were going to say. That, that, well, was, that was option two of the two options that I had in my head. I'm kind of option stoked about it. Option that it's going to be only the cast from the movie. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want that. Well, reading about it, it said that they, uh, you're basically like rookie Ghostbusters. Like, it actually takes place after this film. Um, and it's, it's got a huge emphasis on like couch co-op and everybody playing their own so Ghostbuster. Cool I'm you get so to, in love with that. Yeah, you get to just go out, do missions, earn experience, upgrade your gear, it's specialize your character. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a Ghostbusters it's, RPG. Yeah, oh my god! Yeah, that's yeah so where you awesome. get to like, it's, it's focused on party play too. Like that sounds so cool. Yeah, I, like if I get I'm little emotes and we that. get to like, they need to pull it off, together man, because yeah. it's a big deal for a lot of people. That would be. This fun. is a huge deal for me because the last Ghostbusters game that came out was technically was awesome. supposed to be the third movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was rumored that they were going to make a movie from that game because it. It did so well as a game. Didn't they have a problem with one of the original The actors? licensing rights yeah. weren't there, yeah. unfortunately. But the script, I mean, if, if you've watched the first two movies, most of us have, you play the third game or the game that came out on the PS3, Xbox 360 years ago. Technically, it would be the third game. It, 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 it follow. I mean, it was the script for. It took place oh, it after great. two, and they hired a new guy, and they trained him, and all this crazy stuff was happening. Yeah. and it was perfect. I loved it. I played I a ton of, of Ghostbusters on Sega. I was I yeah, yeah. that one. Oh, I yeah. played on the NES, which was definitely. I did too. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a rough challenge playing that game. Yeah. The <laughs> whole. The, Dude, the, the Stay Puft, man. Mm. No, getting from point A to point B in your car Just and managing the car. fuel Just, was a yeah. pain in the butt. Are you talking mm. about the NES first one? The very first game on the yeah, NES? Yeah, isn't that the one where you had the, the map? And you yeah. drive around and your you car. you had to drive the car you, from... Going up the, the building in the State Puft. Oh, at the end of the game? Yeah. I never got that far so because was, I could never get my car to point, yeah. to point B <laughs> it and I'd have to keep redoing it because the game was so random, like fuel tanks didn't show up half the time and you ran out of gas before you could even get a fuel tank. I'm like, this doesn't yeah. make any sense. I had no problems with that, but that... that Maybe oh I was doing God. something wrong. Gosh, <laughs> like, end of the, anyway, uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I definitely wanted to hear your reaction to that because I, I know it's a big deal. I'm okay deal. with all of this. I mean, if it's pulled off well, dude, it'll be so if much If they fun. can pull it off and give right. you the experience of putting yourself It seems like such a wholesome, fun game. You know what I mean? Like, But if you feel like you're a Ghostbuster, then yeah. okay. Well, see, this, well, if I get to create a this character, is the kind of too? game I could sit down and yeah. play with my kid, who's yeah. going to yeah. love Ghostbusters. Because he loves Ghostbusters, the original movie, because I love Ghostbusters. Now, the yeah. co-op thing's a big deal, too. That's awesome. Co-op is awesome. Yeah. I hope it has both online and couch co-op. I, I Just more games. Couch like we're at, the po we're at the point now where couch co-op is great, dude. I love couch co-op. Couch co-op should come back into play. Because all, all my best gaming memories well, had to do with I'm a friend in the same room. I'm loving that Couch Co-op is making a scene again. Yeah. I'm loving that because it's yeah. been gone for and, so long. And so especially in a, a popular environment like that. It's right. Perfect. I mean, even the, even the right. last one didn't have Couch Co-op. Nine. Co I know you're going to be excited about this when we get back when we talk about Dark Souls. Woo! Right after this. Hello everyone, welcome back to Press Star TV. Uh, thank you again for joining us today, we very much appreciate it. Uh, my name's Will, this is James. Hi -o. This is Nine. Yo. Quick update on Ghostbusters, by the way. It looks like a, a gauntlet, gauntlet style, style gameplay. game. So for whatever that's worth, we'll see how they pull it off. 
don't think exactly gauntlet. I'm sure it has its differences, but that's it's what we think. It's a top-down twin stick shooter. Word. It's like hell divers. Maybe. There yeah. you go. Hell Maybe. divers. Heard? Yeah. I could. I could now all of a sudden, I just want to quote hell divers all yeah. the time. Yeah, it does that to you. Cup of liberty. Um, hell di the the prime dude from Fallout, Liberty Prime, Liberty prime? should totally be in Hell Divers. Man. Yeah, as like a bot or something. Summon, awesome. just drop him down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, take care. It just of throws nudes. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, uh, sorry. I finally, uh, so I finally beat the boss battles. Let's talk about some <laughs> Dark Souls. The game's let's. out. Uh, from Soft, of course. Uh, Demon Souls, Dark Souls One, Two, and Three, Bloodborne. This is a popular series. I love people. A lot of people love this series. Love people love this series <laughs> just because so just the, the difficulty you love people. The difficulty people. of these games a lot of people are into. The settings, it's always dark and whatever, it's, it's just the way it goes. So I feel like people focus too much on like the difficulty is what's good about it. I think it's the result of the so difficulty. There's so much more to that game than just the difficulty. Well, I think it's uh, the sense of accomplishment you get. From it, that it, it, it wor for me, everything works in harmony. It's yeah. like the atmosphere, your characters, everyone, the way that you progress. Everyone asks me, the they go, is like, it really that difficult? And I'm like, it is difficult, but don't focus on the difficulty. Focus on the fact that once you beat it, you actually feel a sense of accomplishment. Unlike yeah. Skyrim and other games you where you, like, when you get to the end, you're just walking on people. And I'll, you're I'll tell like, you my hmm. story with Demon's Souls. Demon's Souls came out on the PS3. This was the first game in, yeah. in the series. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know what was going on. Played it, and I was like, well, okay, okay, I'm, I'm playing along. A year after release, that's uh, how under the radar it was. Yeah, I, I, I was digging. I got the. I was excited about. It. it looked cool when I was playing it. Um, just the ideas of leaving messages and you could trick people and that whole yeah. thing. Uh, but I tell you, I probably played for like <laughs> probably five or six, seven hours, and I could not get by the first area. Yeah. Oh, I was torturous. so yeah. frustrated, and I have never given up on a game before. And I was this close to like, I don't know what the what do you want world from me? I'm supposed to do. I couldn't figure it out. I yeah. literally couldn't figure it out. And finally, when I did, I went through the whole rest of the game, and that sense of accomplishment was <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Dude, that, yeah. those games, I love these games. Anybody who's watched the show knows that I am absolutely adamant about these games. Another great thing about uh, these games, like for Bloodborne, for example, is they don't really tell you what you're doing or what's going on. No, you're kind of you there in this world and you piece it together that, through the items. It's that storytelling's restraint out. that really yeah, brings right. it down. You but they kind of the tell you. Yourself. Once you pick yeah. up an item, they tell you the story about that item. Very small little... Yeah. And then you, you have, have to piece to it together. connect the dots, like why this covenant is doing what they're doing and why this group of people are doing what they're doing and why you're doing what you're doing. Well, I read of this because that like Miyamoto, uh, when he was growing up in school, uh, they had like American uh, fantasy books, mm -hmm. but he couldn't read the English, and so he just saw pictures of like castles and knights yeah. and everything. Sparked so, his imagination. Yeah, sparked his imagination, and so Dark Souls and all that is pretty much like where his imagination went with yeah. our like fantasy architecture. And he takes heavy influences from other things and yep. incorporates them into his games, like Bloodborne. Yeah. Is like Lovecraft. Is Z by yeah. Miyazaki you're talking about? Yeah, Miyazaki, it's that's what I'm going to say. Sorry. Souls games are heavily influenced by guts. Yeah. The uh, berserk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, and, and I know a lot of uh, Souls fans are out there just absolutely can tell you a lot of the intricate details because it makes you want to go and learn more about it. So, Nine, you've played Demon Souls, you've played Dark Souls 1 I and 2, you've played Bloodborne. I know you're in the middle of Dark Souls 3 right now. Tell us what you think so far. Dark Souls 3 is the best Souls game to date. That's a hard thing wow. for me to say because I'm a huge, adamant fan of Dark Souls 1. Okay. Loved yeah. it. But this game introduced a couple new mechanics which set it apart from the other games and give you a little bit of an edge over the previous games. So they've got the battle arts system, which is most of the weapons in the game have a secondary ability when you two-hand it hmm. that give you a power-up move, pretty much, that works really well when you're favorite. Some are a buff for a weapon, some are a special weapon move, mm. some uh, help you out in other ways, they're just, it's awesome. And the actual mechanics of combat are fine-tuned to the point that arrows no longer hit unless they're actually in the flesh of the characters. Nice. Mm. That's so cool. hitboxes are like spot on. I'm loving How are the weapons? Because it's always a big thing for me. Fantastic. Yeah. My all time favorite weapon is back, the Great Scythe. Yeah. Woo! I'm a Dex build. Yes, I level Dex. What, yeah. what about uh, the PvP stuff? 
PvP is on a whole new scale. Yeah. Um, they, they changed the mechanics again for PvP, and it works the way it should work finally. Your, your soul level and your weapon level affect your PvP combat. So if you, if you invade somebody who only has a weapon that's plus two and yours is plus six, your weapon gets downscaled to theirs so you're not OP. Pretty cool. I like that. And just trashing through them. So it's a pretty ingenious method. So. It's real quick, Great. you're watching, listening to Press Start TV. <coughs> My name's Will, this is James. This is nine. Yep. Um, so Dark Souls, we're talking Dark Souls. Now, uh, James, I know you played Bloodborne. Um, I played, we all played Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Uh, yeah, I played great, Dark great Souls game. 1, Dark Souls 2, Bloodborne. Yep. Does it take elements of Bloodborne? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The yeah. combat system is essentially a direct Faster. copy, like cut and paste. Nice. With, you know, the Souls theme. Yeah, Bloodborne, Bloodborne was my ver favorite versus as far as combat goes. Versus and, and swords. Yeah. You have the shields and swords. Yeah, so. yeah, that was my my GM. Love, so, love so that. is there less of an emphasis on shields than in past Dark Souls games? No, okay. um, it, because that's what yeah, I liked I about I Bloodborne going, too. Playing, playing Bloodborne, yeah, they force you not to use yeah. to Bloodborne. Totally different. Uh, I've gotten in Bloodborne, I've gotten used to not using a shield. Yeah, like, you can't. There's right. no point to using right. a shield. Yeah. Except in small, rare instances, but even still, it's useless. Well, normally in my playthroughs of Dark Souls one or two, I used like shieldless builds anyway, just because it was fun. I so overall, Dark Souls three, best in the series. There you go, from Hands an avid, down. avid fan. Best in the series. A well, lot I know of we fans, can't wait to play it. A lot of hardcore <sighs> fans are saying Souls three is the best in the series. I need money. So. <laughs> we'll get just there. Come watch me. Play Thank it. you so much for joining us on this episode of Press Start TV. Until next time, we'll see you. By the way, check out PressStartTV.com. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.